Now there I was, it's Friday night, and I'm saying to myself, you know what? I'm actually kind of looking forward to tonight. Gonna have three hours of wrestling and hoping some of it's gonna be pretty good. And then the three hours of wrestling happened. Now this is my review of SmackDown for this week, this senseless stupid show. But don't you worry, coming up soon behind it on Saturday, I'll be reviewing the stupid, senseless episode of Rampage from AEW. It was a long, boring, bad night of senseless, stupid wrestling. Period. And for me, I think at the very beginning, it just set my whole mood off for the whole night, transparently. She got Becky Lynch out there. And I'm, I apologize to absolutely nobody. Oh boy, we're ripping off Conor McGregor there. <laughs> Even that's not what irritated me. Like that decision's done and made. But you have Bianca Belair coming out. And the first thing she's doing is twirling her hair and everything else and acting like absolutely nothing fucking happened. Like a Big E would or a John Cena would. Like you just got played at SummerSlam, Bianca. You should be talking about how you want to beat the brakes off of Becky right now, and that's it. That's the type of stuff that you should be doing, not sitting there smiling and dancing around. It makes you look like a dumbass. The whole dynamics of this are fucking stupid. Becky Lynch took the cheap way, jumped to the front of the line because she's Becky Lynch, and yet you got Bianca acting like it doesn't matter to her. If she got tricked, it doesn't matter if she got played. It doesn't matter that she just lost the top women's title on SmackDown. Therefore, if she doesn't care, why the hell would the fans? And if she's not going to act like this crap matters, then the fans won't have a reason to boo Becky. I don't care how many damn times you ever sit there and duck the match. Freaking ridiculous. Gonna have Tony Storm appear? Couldn't have Naomi appear at this point. Well, you did fine bang up job of that later in the night. Getting interrupted by Zelina Vega. I hope you're happy cashing them checks to job out like a bitch here. Carmella and Liv Morgan. Maybe at least Liv Morgan had a little bit of a case here. But you're doing a number one contenders match just so that way Bianca can win. Just so that way you're back to the same fucking spot anyways. Typical WWE crap. Wasting everybody's damn time. Next. Chad Gable versus Cesaro. Whoopity do. Next. At this point, I know I'm summarizing it pretty succinctly, pretty quickly here. But we're 45 minutes into the show. You've seen a little bit of Paul Heyman. The Usos. But you haven't seen Roman Reigns. You haven't seen Brock Lesnar, who you wouldn't see on the show. You haven't seen Edge. You haven't seen even Cena, for that Christ's sakes. I mean, he was just in the main event of SummerSlam. I don't necessarily expected him to appear, but nonetheless, goddamn. He didn't even have Baron Corbin on there. All the things that the viewers of SmackDown would be looking at with the most interest, nowhere to be found. Of course, be careful what you fucking wish for. Oh, where's Baron Corbin? Happy Corbin? This had better be some type of plot that's going to blow up in his face. This had better be some type of fucking thing where the walls come crumbling down around him. You had so much going on here with bum-ass Broke Baron Corbin. There was so much you could do. People were into it. They could feel it. Because almost everybody could relate to that feeling of being down and out at some point in time in their damn lives. It's so simple, it's genius. We don't want to see this quasi-JBL fucking rip-off character. Are you going to play this out for months? Months! Yeah, did it piss me off seeing this? You're goddamn right it did. They just can't help themselves. They just can't stick with shit and do something good. 
I said, I hope to God that something's going to happen here. But I know this stupid ass company. I know better. I know better. The Edge and Seth Rollins promos, to be fair, were decent. You know, Edge talking about now he's going to move on to the thing that Seth Rollins cost him. And Seth Rollins talking about how he respects Edge, but he needs to go to a different place. Like, okay, so you know you're getting another match between these two, and based off how good the match was at SummerSlam, I have no complaints about that whatsoever. Boogs and Nakamura versus <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode. There's no Pat McAfee there since he was out due to COVID. He was at home recovering, recuperating. Not the same with him not there to jam out. Um, but... Fuck this match. It had <laughs> fucked off Ziggler in it. The money you pay that asshole that doesn't care, you could have paid to seven younger talents that might actually have potential, that might actually give a shit. But somehow, some way, all of these years, this asshat has persevered, escaped release. I don't fucking get it. And what else I don't fucking get? Is this is how you're going to bring Naomi in? It's almost like you were using it as a toy and a plot device to advance some type of heat that nobody gives a shit about between Sonya Deville and Adam Pearce. When you think about the things like hashtag Naomi deserves better, this, this right here is the type of bullshit that they're talking about. Former women's champion, somebody that the crowd is into, the kids are into, Maybe your average Fox News age demographic viewer that you frickin' have for WWE now doesn't give a crap, but a lot of other fans do. You need to have Sonya Deville come across like, who the hell is Naomi? I didn't even know you are there. Like, that she was so dismissive, it's so, you know, cast aside of Naomi, like she didn't matter. Why in the hell would you do that? If Naomi had never been on a Raw or a SmackDown, if she was somebody from NXT, you could get away with that. But when she's been around for a damn decade, she's been a woman's champion, she's had her name trend on Twitter in the past, what the fuck are we doing here? No one's speaking of that. Is Sasha Banks that under the weather or something? You couldn't have done a video package or something to have her? Especially on a day... When you had people tweeting out, hashtag, we want Sasha Banks, like I said, this is such a stupid, senseless ass episode. Dominic Mysterio taking on Sami Zayn. A lot of people probably hoping, oh, Adam Cole's going to debut here. <laughs> How'd that go for you? <laughs> and Dominic hasn't turned on Ray yet. So again, what the fuck was the point of this? All of this to get to the main event. And... You're hoping, okay, it's the family celebration. It's Samoan Dynasty stuff. They're going to be rocking their badass looking bloodline t-shirts. And those things are slick, man. They super slick. But you're assuming, okay, this is going to be some type of glorious celebration. And probably a lot of you reasonably expected, hey, Brock Lesnar's going to come out and crash the party here. You know, you're playing off the angle right now as you did throughout the show about whose side is Paul Heyman on? Like, what's he What's he all about? Brock Lesnar all of a sudden comes back like, where are Paul's loyalties? Like, that's good. You could have sat there and done more with this. And at a time where you're having news come out that you're not scouting or recruiting or signing independent wrestlers, the traditional sense, and that ADW, AEW can have as many of them as they want. The person you have come out to confront the tribal chief, the head of the table, is fucking Finn Balor? Finn Balor? Who looks like so many of those indie guys that you talk about you don't want any part of anymore. That makes absolutely no goddamn sense. The only sensible thing about it was how Finn Balor said he got jumped in line and he didn't like it, so we're going to have a match next week. But who in the hell wants to see this? This is dumb, stupid. The Street Profits coming back and going after the Usos was far more interesting and compelling. When we get something big like an edge, it's maybe a two-minute promo. 
when we get something like the biggest deal on the show, the frickin' Universal Champion, we're casting him to the side for Finn frickin' Balor. You take a, one of these stories and characters with the bum-ass Broke Baron Corbin angle, and instead of having him lose his money and go to Paul Heyman and ask you for a loan and having Paul Heyman write him a check, and we know how the hell that'll play out, ask all those ECW talents. You see what I mean? Like, the ideas are numerous. I could just keep spitting them, spitting them, spitting them, spitting them. And I can even tell based off of tweet activity and likes and interactions and so forth that people were really getting behind this Baron Corbin shit. As they should have. Because it's something that almost every goddamn buddy could relate to. So they appear to be fucking done with that, which is dumb. Spent over 45 minutes to feature a character that anybody actually gives a shit about. And you're going to say, well, what about Becky Lynch and Bianca? Well, after that opening segment, why in the hell would anybody care about either of them? Becky should have come out and said her shit fine. And then Bianca comes out and says, bitch, I'm going to beat your ass so bad, you're going to wish you were back on maternity leave. Like, that's something that people can feel. That's something that people can believe in. That's something that people, God, God, can fucking relate to. But when it comes to the WWE and their baby faces, they've always got to make them look like dopey, happy dumbasses. That don't care about anything. There's no consequences. There's no ramifications or repercussions for any of this shit. So, yeah. I got to the point, and this is how bad it was. I got to the point. It was about 9.30. I'm like, is it time for Rampage yet? <laughs> Be careful what you wish for, because you just might get that, too. That shit wasn't any better, but at least it was only an hour. Fastest hour of pro wrestling. You know, great tagline, but it actually needs to be if you're going to use it. But SmackDown, talking about SmackDown, because this is a SmackDown review. This was a stupid-ass, senseless-ass show. About what I would expect from a company like this that put on a show like that at SummerSlam Saturday night. 